It is a joy tonight to be sharing with you a message for Easter Vision. I'm so honored and pleased to have this opportunity. My name is Roran Banda. I'm the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Rwanda. I'm also the Bishop of Gasabo Diocese. It is a privilege to be serving my Lord in this capacity at this time. So before we go too far, let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, evening. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. Thank you for what Easter Vision tells us and means to us. I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will open our hearts and our ears to hear and to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I'm sharing with you from the book of Romans. Chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. I would like to read those words so that we can go together and that we understand them together. The heading of the chapter says, Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? That is Paul asking a question. But he also answers it. But he has a series of questions. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who, die, who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That should no longer be slaves to sin because in one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. This is a day. This is the evening. Jesus' body lay in its tomb, guarded by a Roman soldier. When the Sabbath ended at around 6 p.m., Christ's body was ceremonially treated for burial with spices by Nicodemus, and he had purchased some ointments of 75 pounds of perfume. Nicodemus and Joseph of Amartya had come to realize that Jesus was actually the long-awaited Messiah. These two cared for the body, for the burial. In Matthew 27, verses 62 to 66, we see a guard at the tomb. We see a guard at the tomb. The chief priests and the Pharisees were encouraging Pilate to make sure that the tomb was heavily guarded for the fear that the words that Jesus had predicted, that he would be he would raise, he would, he would raise, he would be raised on the third day. They were afraid that that would be true, that the disciples would come and steal him away. They were afraid that the disciples would steal the body 
and tell people he had risen from the dead as he had said. These guys went and sealed the tomb and sealed with stone and set a guard to the tomb. This is an evening between death and life for those who understand the story. It is a difficult evening. It is time of grieving. This is the night for us who know the story that death becomes life. Paul draws our attention to baptism, an act of obedience for believers, an act that should be preceded by repentance, repentance of our sins. A moment that symbolizes a rebirth, a union with Christ. A time when Christians enter into water of baptism, or whether it is by immersion, or whether it is sprinkled, we are proclaiming the gospel message when we are baptized. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and lives again. In verse 4 of chapter 6, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. We were dead to the power of sin. It is interesting to note that this evening is crucial as we think that tomorrow there will be another life, a life in Jesus. But this dying with him and rising with him is more of a participatory where Christians share in Christ's death and resurrection as we can see it in verse 4 to 5. Baptism, therefore, my brothers and sisters, for those who believe, is a visible demonstration of believers. To death, burial, and resurrection with our Jesus Christ. We also share the blessing of his resurrection, which is a new life. Remember that the heading of these words was saying, dead to sin, alive to God. We are under a new leadership for those who have accepted him. We are under a new manager of our lives. The scripture in 2 Corinthians 5 to 17, it says that the old man is gone for those who accepted Jesus and the new man has come. So there is an old management in a sense which is a management of sin. And there is a new management, which is a management by Christ. New power to life. A new way. Jesus is true life. He came so that we can have life. So death and the resurrection frees us from the slavery to sin. It allows us to walk in a newness of life. It gives us new values. It gives us a new identity. It gives us a new mindset. For we are in Jesus who died on the cross, who was buried and who resurrected for us to have a victory over sin and therefore a new life. With Christ's crucifixion, with Christ crucified, it simply means that Christ paid the penalty of our sin. 
He provided the power that we need to overcome sin on a daily basis. Because of his death, because of his burial, because of his resurrection, sin is powerless. Sin is ineffective. As I said, 1 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us of an old self and a new man. Power of sin has been broken because of the crucifixion, because of Christ crucified and for those who believe. And so tonight as we look forward to tomorrow, when Christ is risen, it is a very meaningful evening for those who believe because we know what is happening tomorrow. It is also a beautiful story for us because we know that this time as believers it is a difficult time. It is a sad time. But it is also a time where we have hope. We have something to look forward to. And for those who are not believers, for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as a very personal Savior, this is a proclamation of the gospel of Jesus. That he came. That he died for our sins. That he was crucified. That he suffered for you and me. That he was buried and on the third day he rose. That resurrection is what gives us victory. That resurrection is what gives us power. That resurrection is what brings a meaning. Can you imagine if he had not been resurrected? And so tonight, some of you are baptizing. Others are praying. Let me invite you that if you have not accepted Christ in your life, as a personal savior, that you do it. Knowing that he died for you. Knowing that he was put on the cross for your sins. Knowing that he paid the price for you. And that he resurrected. And that that it gives you, if you accept Jesus Christ, it gives you a new identity. It gives you a new life. It gives you new values. It, it puts you in the family of believers. And for those who have accepted Jesus Christ, who are listening to me tonight, where you are seated, whether you are in a congregation, in a church this evening, or whether you are home, it is time to rejoice. It is time for joy. Because you know what is happening tomorrow. It is also time to celebrate in a way. Because you celebrate what you know is happening. That his crucifixion is actually what paid your, for your sins. It is what gives you the power you need through the Holy Spirit to live a day-to-day -day life, knowing that you are not slave to sin, knowing that you are not under the power of sin. Sin is powerless. And so I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to draw closer to him, to put him into your life and let him lead your life, to call sin a sin, but knowing that by the grace of God you have been saved. And so tonight, think about that. Think about his death. Think about his burial because of you and me. Think about the love of God that he manifested for you and me. And look forward to tomorrow where we celebrate and shout, He is risen! And that is, I an amazing story that is significant to you and me. That is a victory that you and 
die as believers should celebrate. This is also another reason why we should never be ashamed to preach and teach about Jesus, the one who came, the one who died for our sins, the one who paid the price, the one who rose again, the one we are waiting for his return. May he found us ready for his kingdom, for him to take us home. May we take this news of his death, of his crucifixion, of his burial, and tomorrow of his resurrection to those who have never heard, so heard so that they may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you as you draw closer to him. May the Lord bless you as you meditate tonight about his death, about his burial. May the Lord bless you as we wait for tomorrow to shout with fathers, he is risen. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, <laughs> You are a loving God who has loved us and demonstrated it and manifested it. You are a loving God who cared enough to pay for our sins by giving your son Jesus Christ on the cross and died, buried, and rose again and rendered sin ineffective and powerless. May your grace abound. May your Holy Spirit take this message and bring it to our hearts and minds to meditate on as tomorrow we celebrate Easter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>